Hey, nerds. Hey, this is Pete, or Kench1913. And this is Nerd Hater 82 no, just, <laughs> <laughs> And this is another Game of Thrones review. This is episode 5, The Wolf and the Lion. You got anything to say quickly before we start? I like Oreos. Yeah. It's a great episode. So it's let's, quality episode. So actually. let's yeah. quickly go over the summary. Mm -hmm. So we start off the episode where Ned visits the dead guy who just died in the last episode, if you remember. You of the Veil. And he's just yapping with Sir Baraniston Selmy about, you know, why why was he killed? How was he killed? Because they thought, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they both had, like, practicing jousty things. Yeah. It's because he had, his, uh, he had his thing on long. And he just, you know, luck of the draw, he uh, had to fight the mountain. I buy it. Yeah, so they kind of... He was put against the mountain on purpose. Yeah. He I think this was a, uh, this was this was a legal up. hit. Yeah. That's what I think it was. Yeah. So then Ned the heads over to Robert's tent. All right, there's a kid in the tent with Robert. Robert's uh, Squire. Robert Squire, who is Lancel Lannister. Another goddamn Lannister. And he's played by Eugene Simon. And he's basically... You know, again, Robert's little guy mm -hmm. who's, uh, you know, Cersei said... Oh, someone's armor, grab yeah. his wine and shit. Yeah, Cersei said, you know what, you need uh, someone of to be your squire. She loves having those fucking little wine jerks around. Yeah. Where Robert plans on fighting. Yep. And Ned says, nah, you shouldn't do that because no one's going to hit you. Oh. Because they're not. Because they're like, not. He's the king. It's like you play pick a basketball against your boss. Yeah. So or gonna let him get him up yeah, or up Michael into. Jordan. You kidding me? I wouldn't play hard against him. I just let him school me all day, even though he's gonna school me all day. Right. Because he's freaking Michael Jordan. That's a story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He invited the White House to shoot hoops. He's gonna let the president do because he would be like, I didn't. I'm not the guy that. Yeah, I'm not gonna that guy who's gonna reject the fucking president. Oh right. fucking ah! Uh, what what's that thing called when you hit the ball right out when it's supposed to go in field going or something like that? Goaltending. Yeah, goaltending. Yes. I wouldn't goaltend the president. Oh well. No. So then we head to the uh, tournament again, once again, because it's still going on. And uh, it's the Mountain versus Loris Terrell. Who this, is is our, this is our first introduction to Loris. Yeah, he is called Knight of the Flowers. He's played by Finn Jones, and he's a he's a handsome fellow. He is. He's a handsome fellow. Uh, a fancy fellow, too. Yeah, he is also fancy. He's got very his, ornate yeah, uh, his, his armor. His helmet is very fancy. And, uh, he hands out a nice flower to, to uh, uh, Sansa, Sansa, who uh, is just, she just swoons. Yeah, like she, she like swan. you said... Even though they're not gonna see it, like you said, she'd be the uh, she'd be the woman who, or the little girl who falls in love with Justin Bieber. Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah. uh, there's a little wager. Uh huh. There's a little wager. Between Renly little finger and Renly, and they uh, bet little finger bets on the uh, the mountain because yeah. he looks like a really big favorite. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, Renly must know something about Tyrell because uh, he he bets on him. Yeah. So they have their little jousting thing, and the mountain is unhorsed. Quite easily. Yeah, quite easily because of his horse was acting funny. Yeah. So then Renly, I mean, Littlefinger says to uh, Sansa that the horse was in heat. And she was like, yeah. no, Loris would never do that because yeah. he wouldn't do that because he's an honorable guy. You got to do what you got to do. To yeah. I got to get out now. Yeah, because they're gonna, he's going to get a ton of money. Shit, yeah. So the mountain is pretty ticked off about this. He's pretty, you know what? When I get ticked off, I'd like to behead a horse. Yeah, man. yeah. So he goes up to his horse and he cuts he the damn head cuts off. He cuts a goddamn horse's head. Goddamn head right Son off. Son of a bitch. Then he directs his anger towards Loris Terrell. Yeah, starts kicking the shit of him, beating him down. And finally, someone comes in to save him, his own brother. The, the hound. hound comes in and he protects Loris for a bit until Robert screams, so Stop fighting in the name of the king. Yeah. And then, uh, drunkenly roars at you. Yeah, know. and, uh, so they stop, and the and the mountain walks away. Yeah, he's all pissy. And, and the hound, uh, or, he gets a little adulation from the yeah, crowd, because Lord Tyrell hops up and gives him his props. Yeah, and he's know. like, oh, I give it, thank you, sir, you saved my life. And he's like, I'm no sir. No, he's not. No, so. But he does accept the crowd's love. Really. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. He looks uncomfortable doing it, but I think he kind of liked it. Yeah. So then we cut to Lady Stark and Tyrion, and they take off Tyrion's hood because he was wearing a hood and they find out that he's they're actually instead of heading back to winterfell like she had said they are actually heading to the eerie or the Vale, which is an area um east east On the of winterfell seaboard uh southeast of winterfell um and they're heading there because uh what Cat is Stark's it sister Cat, lives there. Cat, yeah catlin's sister lives there the recent widow of john john Aaron. Aaron. So then, the let's see. This whole, uh, thing. 
Yeah, so then they are attacked by the hill tribe people. Who are kind of like... Who are kind of like the savages. Kind of like wild people, yeah. In the uh, in that area, slings and like you know sticks and rock clubs and shit. Uh huh. And so and, they're uh, being attacked. And there's quite a scrum. There's a oh, scrum. I like that yeah. word. And so they're fighting, and Tyrion gets loose, and he beats up the instead of trying to run away or let Lady Stark die. He actually he helps. actually helps out, which shows that he, again yeah. he's not a bad guy. No, he's, he's been saying I'm not a murderer. Yeah, I'm not a he, piece of shit. Yeah. Oh, he does get his first kill. Yeah, he does. He, he does uh, get his knocks first dude kill. down with a shield and beats his brains in it. Yeah, it's pretty graphic and pretty yeah. cool. Well and, done, and so we go back to Bran, where Theon is uh, shooting some bow and arrow, mm -hmm. or just arrow, whatever. And Bran is just discussing all various houses and whatnot. And he's, he's like, doing his studies. And yeah, he, and he's like, why is Ben Mulder? He's a little whiny. Yeah. But, but, you know, you, you a kid's supposed to have his mom, so yeah, you're supposed to you, you let him slide a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, he's just discussing the houses as they are trying to get more and mm -hmm. more information in. So that it's not too weird when they right, just right. have to whatever. So then we go to um, Arya. She's trying to catch a cat. Because why not? <clears throat> and uh, she kind of runs towards the basement. So Into the dungeon. Yeah, so Varys is actually talking with Ned beforehand, and he's kind of telling Ned about how he, he didn't trust him in the beginning, and he's telling him how someone is after Robert's life. Mm -hmm. Not just John Aaron, but Robert as well. Yeah. And, he, you know, Ned was like, why didn't you tell me this earlier? And he's like, because I didn't know how I to trust sure you. Yeah. So Varys kind of uh, tells um, how they poisoned John Aaron, basically. Yeah. Pretty much sealing the fact that the suspect we kind of knew. Mm -hmm. we, were, we all suspected that this was the way he died. Yep, you the veil. Kind of you of the veil poisoned <laughs> Poisoned uh, John Aaron because he was a squire and, and he was then the awarded the knighthood. Yeah, by someone who we don't know who it is yet. The only first, the only thing he did say was somebody who could afford it. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, to me, that 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 points a vague finger towards the Lannisters. Yeah, because they have, are the rich people. Yeah, they have the most money and all. So, so that's a way of of, of you know mm -hmm. saying maybe it's a Lannister as well, saying it's Lannisters. Mm -hmm. So then we head over to Arya, who's in the uh, dungeon. Mm -hmm. Hanging out with the dragon skulls and she gets lost, yeah. Yeah, Finds and she, the dragon skulls, which are kind of neat. She hears Varys and uh, Ilrio, I think that was his name, Ilrio. Ilrio Maestro. Yeah, they're talking. Maestro, they're talking about killing a hand and the savage and whatnot. Lions and wolves. And yeah, and they're all at each other's throats. Yeah. So then she runs back to her daddy, and she then hears this. So yeah, she, yeah, takes she wants to go to back to her dad. So Varys yeah. and Littlefinger are talking to each other. This is probably my favorite scene in the whole show right now, or at mm -hmm. least this episode, is Varys and Littlefinger talking, and they're kind of slyly threatening each other because yeah. they're both, they're both uh, quality snippery. No yeah, they're quality. both they're both kind of sneaky, sly sons oh, of yeah. bitches, and they they kind of threaten each other. We're like, you know, where have you been, Littlefinger? And then, well, I know where you've been. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, well, I know where you've been. Blah blah blah. So then, what ends up happening is Renly comes in, and tells him there's a meeting. Nice. And even the king's gonna join. Yeah, the even the king, which he that never which is news. So then we head back to Ned, who Arya finally comes back, and he's yep. kind of yelling at her. We which told you be. not, told you not to run away. But then the night night's watch guy, Yorin, yeah. who Tyrion was traveling with, comes in and tells Ned about that the, uh, that Caitlyn the abduction. So, yeah, so Kate, be it. Caitlyn took um, <clears throat> little uh, Tyrion. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he said he you know he rode fast trying to beat the the rest of the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He trying because to give it's him a chance be, to get be... the hell out of Dodge or you know spin it the way he can. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? He tried to give him a leg up. And it's gonna be widespread news, uh, basically the next the day. day. Yeah. So we had so Ned is summoned to the small council, mm -hmm. and Robert basically is pretty ticked off, and he wants. Daenerys Targaryen dead because he's heard my favorite saying of the word whore ever. Yeah. The way he said the whore is yeah. pregnant. It's, he makes that word, he draws it out in a way that makes me, like, you know, you might just call somebody a whore to call yeah. them a whore, like it's an insult. Or to say, oh, it's just a huge whore to his whore house. Yeah. He says whore with a loathing that makes me, like, almost feel bad for real whores. Mm hmm. Yeah. But he wants that bitch dead. Yeah. She's like a fucking seventeen year old chick. Yeah, she's uh she's fairly young and yeah. she's pregnant and he's pretty she pissed proud. off. But he, you can understand his anger a little bit because you know he does not like Targaryens. He hates the fucking Targaryens. Yeah. So he wants him dead. Ned's like, nah, I don't want him dead. 
I don't want a dead. You'll be just like the man. Yeah, why are you so afraid of a pregnant teenager? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He throws a little uh, insult to his manhood. uh Shaking the shadow of an unborn child. Yeah, and so, you know, they all, all the people on the council kind of try to convince Ned that, you know, this is the proper thing to do. Even if it sucks. Yeah, Ned says, hell no. And he quits. Hanging the hand. Drops the pin and everything. Mm -hmm. Tosses it and walks out. So as Ned is packing as fast as he can, Littlefinger comes in and tells him that he will show the last person John Aaron talked to before he became sick. <gasps> the plot thickens, yeah. see? And uh, then we go back to Renly, or we don't go back to him. This is the first time we actually see this. Renly and Loris, and they're talking about... They're actually... Loris is shaving right now. Yeah. Which this is a highly a, uh, uh, gay scene. Highly a little bit, yeah. Homosexual uh, scene, which is fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fine. All right. And uh, but, uh, they're kind of talking this is the about... Where actually, there is little thing that made a joke about them being friends. Yeah. In the... Early in the episode, and that turns out he's right. Yeah, they and are friends. Showing again, little finger, he knows a lot of shit about everybody. Yeah. So they're kind of talking about... Stuff on how um you know how, readily, how would Renly than Robert so they're yeah. kind of kind of plotting in the back of the yeah. uh, King's Landing which everyone's doing I guess oh yeah plotting much. like no one's business yep. and then we had the Cersei and Robert and they're talking about their marriage they're talking yeah. about the this round. is great. this was probably my favorite scene yeah it's a good so. scene because so. they you rarely see them kind of not yelling at each other you know what I mean or squabbling yeah. I mean it's actually rare they're in scenes together in the first place yeah and because he obviously doesn't give a shit about her really yeah and they're both kind of it's kind of a heartfelt obviously felt a marriage scene. of politics like, yeah more than anything yeah. yeah and so they're kind of talking about the realm the marriage the past their past how he doesn't want the Dothrakis to come and take down the whole thing. And, you know, they're just talking about, like, you know, how does the kingdom stay together? And uh, he's like, our hatred. (laughs) (laughs) Or, no, no, our marriage. And he's like, how long can hatred hold a marriage together? And she's like, 17 years. Seems pretty long time. They have a nice laugh about how much they dislike each other. Yeah. It's it's really, it's ironically touching. Yeah. And then we go, we go to Ned, who meets the, uh, the whore, um, who fathered a bastard uh, by mm-hmm. Robert? Another yeah. one. So he's the got bastard a lot. with that black hair. He's got eyes. yeah. He's got quite a lot of bastards. And yeah. Ned kind of asks uh, Littlefinger, you know, what's, I don't know how many bastards? Why would John Aaron look into all these bastards? And Littlefinger's like, maybe he's trying to be fatherly or something to make sure they're taking care of whatever. Care. Yeah, yeah. So they leave the uh, whorehouse, and guess who's there? The Lannisters. The Lannister with a whole bunch of dudes. And they are there because they have heard that uh, Caitlyn Stark has taken Tyrion. And they're pretty pissed off. So yeah. what ends up happening is we get some death. Oh, yeah. yeah bloodshed. Yeah, a lot of death. Yeah. Yori ends up getting killed. Yori. Jory. Jory. I'm sorry. Jory, Jory. is uh, Ned's like right-hand man down at King's Landing. He gets he killed. Him. Right in a very right. nice way. Yeah, right in the eye. He gets stabbed right through the goddamn eye. Right, right through the friggin' it's eye. Pretty it's pretty gross. And then we finally get the battle that everyone was looking for because you got Ned and uh, Jamie, and they yeah. were bitching at each other like throughout the whole season so far. And finally, we get it, some sword action. flirting with each other. Yeah, we get some sword yeah. action, and it was just, it's great. And then, you know, they're Quality. kind of equal, and then some dude just stabs Ned in the back of the leg. Yeah. And Ending then, the, uh, the fight with the ladies. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's it. So... Rob, let's, let's, the, uh, episode let's, ends, yeah. yeah, and it was a very good episode. So it was. It advanced the story a lot. Yeah. Uh, it also I didn't like, really introduce new characters, but it gave us a lot of characters a little more flesh. Mm-hmm. Good moments. I like the fact that there wasn't a ton of characters in this episode, and it, once again, it yeah, really eventually it's overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the first few episodes, there's just too many characters. I yeah. thought, especially someone going in not reading the book before. Yeah. It was like, wow, there are too many characters. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's see. So, yeah, I think this episode was good. I liked it because we finally got to see Ned and Jamie fight. That was really good. Yes. Even though it was at the end, it was still awesome to see that happen. Yeah. And so, let's talk about various characters that I might have forgotten to mention beforehand. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we have uh, Loris. We have Bronn. Bronn is this mercenary Bron. fellow. or. Yeah. And he is going with... Uh, we learned in the last episode that Bronn's pretty smart. Yeah. Because uh, he quickly takes Tyrion's offer up of uh, giving up his room for some money. 
Yeah, and then so, we find out in this episode he's a fairly good fighter, and he's basically a mercenary. He survives the um the ambush by the hill people. Yeah, and he's a mercenary uh by uh by trade essentially by Caitlin Stark right, Stark right now, and he's played by Jerome Finn, and he's Flynn. Flynn. I'm sorry, Flynn. And he's pretty badass. And he's pretty excellent. He's actually one of my favorite characters. Also. Yeah, he's definitely. Uh, well, we'll see more of him, and he's probably my favorite new character this episode. Definitely. Yeah. And so then we have this girl named Roz. She's actually a uh, character made up just for this show. Mm-hmm. And she's basically... She's an amalgamation of a lot of different uh, uh, people. And whores, yeah. really. In the show. Yeah. She, or any, in the, anytime in the somebody supposed to happen, something sort of significant happens with a uh, a prostitute, Yeah. Uh, they kind of just make it Roz. Yeah. So, so the, that it's a recurring character instead of different... Different whores. Uh, different whores. Which is fine. Oh, That's yeah. a good way to do it. It is. And she is played by Esme Bianco. All right. She's played very well. Yeah, she does and, a good uh, job. She's got a nice, nice tits. As Sam and John were talking about, she does have very nice breasts. Yeah, yeah. And so then we have Lise Aaron, who is uh, Caitlin's, son, yeah. Caitlin's sister. And we didn't discuss that scene too much because it's very short. Yeah. And in the next episode, it'll, it'll be a lot yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, um, Caitlin brings her. She's essentially a fucking creep, though. Yeah, she's crazy because she's still breastfeeding her kid, Robert Aaron. Anyways, yeah, right Lise, Aaron, it's weird. Lise Aaron is played by Kate Dickey. Yeah, it's Kate Dickey. Well, good job being a fucking creep. Cause you and Robert Aaron, creep. Robert Aaron, who's a little boy who's mm-hmm. still breastfeeding on her on his mom. And he's like, Lino, and when you say little boy, we mean like eight. Yeah, like, like Lino Faccioli. How would you say that? Uh, uh, Faccioli, maybe? I don't know. You're the Italian one. I, I don't know. I'm just going to say Faccioli. I put Faccioli. I don't, I don't know. But anyways, so I think that's all the new... Oh, Var- Vardis Egan. He's a knight of the veil. Vale. He's yeah. played by Brendan McCormack. Again, he'll get uh, more play in, in, the, in the next few episodes. episodes. Yeah. But yeah, so the veil vale is kind of like the area... You know, uh, Caitlin thought, you know, it would be a good idea to bring him there because it's somewhere safe. And, and then sister yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be sort of a safe haven. Yeah, yeah. And it's a uh, it's apparently a very hard place to get to. Mm-hmm. It's actually... Uh, Castle on a mountaintop. Yeah, it's and pretty it's like awesome. separate castles. You had to climb each one to get to the tippy top mm-hmm. to get the little head of the castle. It's crazy. And mm-hmm. so let's go through. Is this episode staying true to the book? I would say yes. Yeah. The only couple things again, like I mentioned in the last episode, there was actually two days of the tournament. Mm-hmm. One was going to be a melee, and Robert wanted to fight in the melee. He and, talks about that in this yeah. in that scene. And then uh, at the end of the episode. Which is fine by me because I would rather have it the way the the show did it. Ned basically falls off his horse oh, yeah, and his breaks horse his and legs, legs and breaks his leg. The logistics of, of and, trying to film that are just yeah. Water, so. And so I would rather have Jamie and Ned fight just because of all that tension. Yeah, and yeah. all that tension that they've been building up to talking about how you know you know you've been finding the right guy. You've always yeah. fought the right guy. This, that, and the other. And, uh, yeah, that's basic. I think it's, again, the show is doing a, a really, really good job of staying very true to the book and not really veering off of uh, the no. main plots. Uh, they do whatsoever. things like uh, combining characters well. Yeah, uh, uh, or like scenes where they're right. inferred, like Robert and Cersei when they're talking together. You never see that, but you, you figure they're going to talk about that kind of shit, you know what I mean? Well, the books, if you've read the books, are set up to where different chapters mm-hmm. are represented by different people. So a chapter will be titled Ned, and we, everything we see is through Ned's eyes. Mm-hmm. And some characters are chapter characters. They're not point of view characters, like Renly and Loras. Mm-hmm. Are neither are point of view characters. Yeah. And we always hear about the relationship through secondary characters. Yeah. Through people who don't... Like they don't kind come of know that they're a couple. Yeah, they don't come out and say but it. But nobody okay. like will just But know, in this it. episode, they're like, you know what? They're, they're together. showing it they're because together. we have to know this as a... As a viewer. As an audience, yeah. yeah. Um, in a book, you can just somebody can hear a story about somebody, mm-hmm. but I don't want to watch somebody tell me. Yeah, I don't want to watch Littlefinger tell Ned that these guys were making out. Yeah, like, and show. also in a book, you know, you have more freedom to do internal dialogue where you really can't do that in, exactly. a, in, a, in a TV show. So let's just go over the best lines and best kills, and we'll be done. And mm-hmm. so my favorite line. Of this episode was the line by Robert in the, almost the very beginning where he's like, I thought being king meant I could do whatever I wanted, which sums up a lot of people in power. Yeah, where they very think, good. Where they think because they're at the tip top of the, uh, of the feed, of uh, the, you know, the, the pyramid yeah. or, the, or the food chain or whatever, they can do whatever the hell they want. But 
You know what? They still have to deal with all the bullshit consequences that come mm-hmm. with their dumbass action. And a lot of stupid responsibilities. Yeah. You know, my favorite line is easily brought uh, when being told that the theory is impregnable. He says, give me 10 good men in climbing spikes, then I'll impregnate the bitch. Oh, yeah. Quality fuck line. It is a great line. He Quality does. Quality line. And it shows, like, Bren, Bron's, um, he's intimidated by very little. He no. This he's, guy. He's, he wants to take on everything. He's yeah. not And afraid. he seems like he will have a plan for it, too. Mm-hmm. You know? And so the be- uh, uh, best kill, at least in my opinion, was Jory. It's hard to go against that. Jory just getting stabbed in the eye by Jamie because he's like, oh, you know, I'll take on some guys. Let me go right yeah. after the big boss. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because, like, no, no he was, don't do he was that. you know, having a little skirmish with a couple people. Yeah. And he turns around and then Jamie Lannis is there. And, and he's you like, know, kind of like, me. Ooh, if I get him. And he just went after him and Jamie just clang, clang, clang. Head yeah, stabbed dead. Come yeah, on. that's it. Just, so, what's your. What, another one uh, that was very good. I think you mentioned that one, right? Which kills that? Tyrion. The Tyrion oh, just t- bashing. Tyrion, him. Yes. Getting a shield and just bashing yeah. this guy. a guy down and then just fucking clobbering the shield. Yeah, it's pretty good. Up, and then it's, finally it's for nice. the uh, the Peter people, the horse. The horse. Oh. The horse just getting its head chopped off. Yeah. Wow. Harsh. Not a real horse, by the way, of course. No shit. Well, we don't want people are like, yeah, you kill the horse. And you didn't kill the horse, you're stupid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's no around that. Just shoot yourself or something because yeah. you're stupid. Dumb. So, so this has been Peter. Let's close the Yeah, don't the stupid. yeah. Don't think that they really killed the horse. I, yeah. I want to say they had all kinds of things. I forget what it was, but yeah, props and shit. Yeah, giant horse head ready to go yeah. just to fall off a horse body and get the drop of a hat. So yeah, this has been Pete or Kench nineteen thirteen along with Rob, and this has been another Game of Thrones review. Bye bye.